Hello, Hi. everybody, and welcome to episode 80, our second end of season special uh, since the Resonance Arcade relaunch. My name is Chris, and as always, I am joined by my co hosts, Danny and Matt. Our end of season special is usually a little bit different from our regular show, but we're keeping things similar just, just this once. Just, you know, see how it goes. So we've we've done one end of season special, so we've already set the tone, which was chaos. And and <laughs> this this one's just, uh, we're just, wait, we're just going to make it up as we go along. Yeah, it's like a sine wave, yeah. That's what we'll go with. S same Lovely. as every other week, then. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be doing our last competition round, because I wasn't here last week. Announcing the season winner, talking about some games we've played, obviously, and covering some recent gaming news. So we'll get straight on to the competition. This is the last competition. We we probably the last competition for a while because Danny shit has and he, he literally plays no games <laughs> and cannot come up with anything and he's he's been struggling for ages. We had to what was it? Rainbow Six no Rainbow Blacklist uh, Six. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist. That was it. That yeah. was a that was a reach, that was. That was a reach and it what was. you've done two other games before that. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, this brilliant competition that I thought was quite unique and, and you know, worked quite well. Danny's went, nope. Yeah, no, so. I don't play enough games, obviously. But yeah, we've so got other things in the works, though. So. We have, yeah, well, yeah, we're coming up with some ideas at the moment and yeah. hopefully we'll have a... We, we maybe, maybe vary it up and do some different features. Maybe we'll just come up with one and it works. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, so yes, let's get on to the competition. So for those who haven't listened before, our competition is a nine-part competition. We missed last week because Danny wasn't here. So... um. What it is, is it's, what are you selling? And what are you buying? And somebody, well, okay. one of us, sells a game to the other two every week, and we allocate points if we would buy it at full price or we would buy it at sale price, current full price or historical low sale price, I suppose. 1 point or 0 0.5 points or 0 0.16782432. Recurring. Recurring. Um <laughs> Yeah, as I scored. Um, so yes, this week it's Matt's go. Um, it's your. It's the last go of the, the season, and we're going to also summarise the competition. So Matt, what are you selling? Go. What are you buying? Oh, what have you started already? <laughs> uh, you've got three. You've had five seconds gone now. Right. Well, this week I'm selling Shower with Your Dad Simulator 2015, and I'm here to ask you an important question: Do you still shower with your dad? So, show with your dad simulator 2015. Do you still show with your dad? Uh, dad, I am going to pronounce it fully every time I say it. Is a uh, seconds gone. <laughs> great. It's an eight bit showering with your father simulator where you pick one of three distinct boys, young boys, and you have to shower with the correct dad. Otherwise, <laughs> it's game over. And there's certain pitfalls you've got to watch out for. So if you run into the wrong dad, then that's game over. If you step on soap, you go flying across the level and might accidentally bump into someone's dad. But that's not all. You might think, that's just one game mode. Why would I pay for that? Well, don't worry, because there's another two game modes. There's uh, The first one is Enduro Dad, which is where you just you pick a child and match the dads. The second one is Dadathalon, where you get given a random child every time you match a dad, and then you have to go to the correct dad that with that child. And finally... The best one is Dad Divisions, where there are fathers, for whatever reason, falling from the sky, and you have to catch them as a child. <laughs> now, okay. you're probably wondering, like, how do they manage the nudity? Very well. There's, uh, it's fully, fully nude 8-bit graphics, so there is a lot of... I believe every penis is at least eight pixels, so it's like it's basically a sex game at this point. And honestly, I don't know if we can really talk about it because it is quite saucy. There's a lot of dangling dad dong going on. Um, Twenty seconds left, dangling dad dong. <laughs> Triple D. Uh, ten seconds. Now, that was ten seconds of laughter. <laughs> There's a very upbeat OST, which is included with <laughs> every purchase as well. In case you want to like recreate it with your actual father, you dun, can play dun, the dun, OST dun, 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 dun. and shower with your dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we get the option to ask. <laughs> Say option because Danny often doesn't execute his, uh, his free right. will at this moment and <laughs> ask all three questions. We get right. to ask three questions of Matt and to, to see if we would buy it. So immediately... Um, I didn't think, when you said you were going to use this, I didn't think I'd seen the game, but I have actually seen the game. I remember looking at it with all my friends thinking, well, I think we were looking for, like, what is the most random simulator you can find on Steam? 
right? And we found toilet simulators, you know, going to the toilet simulator. And I mean, we were looking for everything and shower simulator came up and we found shower with your dad simulator. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I remember. That's not a question, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, you know, I, I, that was a full disclosure, so I do actually know what it looks like. I have seen the gameplay, and I kind of understand. I haven't played it, but I kind of understand it. Um, so my first question is, how does the dad matching work? So you're given three distinct dads um, and three distinct children, and the idea is that depending on the game mode, you either pick a certain child, and every time you have to match that child to the right dad, or there's another mode where it swaps between children every time you pick a dad. So, so how does depend- how do you match the child? Also, so you've because I know there's different some of the some of the kids have beards and I'm some- not I, I don't have the <clears throat> show your dad uh, deal. Say. Beard I'm deals. Not- <laughs> <laughs> child show with your deal. dad's beard. <laughs> um, um, but anyway, some some of the kids like have facial hair or black hair, and some of them will be. You know, black. Some of them would be white, but is, yeah. it, is is it just matching skin color, or is it more elaborate than that? That's what my question was. The there's only three children and three dads, so it's very simple. There's a black father and a black son, a white father and a white son, and a I don't really know how to describe tanned. him, and a very uh, like a tanned father who has a very ginger son, <laughs> and apparently those two match together. So okay, fine. Okay, right. And basically, you you all you have to do is, as a child, run headfirst into your naked father to get a point. <laughs> okay. I thought it was more elaborate than that. So when I watched the demo, when I watched the, the video, it looks a lot more complicated, but it, it's really not. Okay. Are, are you sure you watched the right video? <laughs> but I might have been on the wrong website. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, <laughs> what horrendous search term led you to find this game? It was, I think it was on a suggested game. <laughs> that's, that's like Facebook throwing an advert for like <laughs> hair loss or something like that, you know? We thought you might like a bit more elaborate than that. I think I've had like uh, gay singles adverts on my, on my Facebook adverts before now. Don't know how they came up, but anyway. Um, yeah. Is that what you tell your wife? You don't yeah. know how they got on there. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. I might be struggling, you know. I might be struggling. <laughs> Eight bit graphics, two, three, three game modes. Um, is it multiplayer? No, unfortunately. Which I think it would be a fantastic multiplayer game. So I'm hoping when they eventually release the sequel, Shower with Your Dad Simulator 2016, do you still shower with your dad? That it will have a multiplayer component, but I can't confirm that yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> and and how, would, how do you reckon, how do you envisage that working? This is my third question follow-up, by the way. Um, I imagine it would be that one person controls the dad and one person controls <laughs> the boy. So the dad's a static, aren't they, at the moment? They just stand still yeah. and get in the shower. <laughs> yeah, so you, you presumably, there'd be different <laughs> game modes where it's like dad tag, where like the father's <laughs> got to run away from the child. Or possibly you've got to take another dad and then it's their turn to do it. I, I don't know. I could spit tag. all ideas. Todger tag. Todger tag. Todger. 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 I don't know. I could sit here all night and literally spitball different ideas about how you could turn children running into naked men into a game, but I don't want to get on any watch lists. So yeah, let's right. just. We're already on a few. <laughs> Danny, you got your last two questions. <laughs> once you match, once you you know successfully shower with your dad, is there much more to it other than a counter of a point going up? <laughs> is there any bonuses? Any like anything that I don't know? You know, just a bit more interesting than walking a boy to his dad and gaining a point. Is there anything more to it than actually doing that? It's a very unfettered, pure gaming experience, and it doesn't get bogged down with things like dad streaks or, or political correction or political correctness. No, it, it's it's very pure, very innocent nudity with children. Right. <laughs> I, I think the serious answer is a counter goes up. And then you, you and just it. flat the next fleet, yeah. screen flashes up, and it's three more dads in three random positions, and you're the new kid or you're the same kid. Right. Okay. Basically, yes. Oh dear. And I'm... 
Oh, can I have a bonus question? Danny, if you want to pass, you can. I can. Excuse me. I can't really. If it's that simple, then yeah, go on, Chris, I suppose. Um, <laughs> not... <clears throat> I've forgotten my fucking bonus question. Um, no, it's gone. Uh, there was too much time between me asking that and me thinking about Sharon with my dad. <laughs> Just... I mean, as long as there's not like two and oh, forty volts, right? And okay, so this leads on to the next bit then. So if there's no other questions from Danny, um, has it ever been on sale? Apparently, yes. Right. Like, okay. So it... you tell us what the the. <laughs> to why, prices are. Before he said, why did you say has it ever been on sale like it it would never have been? Because when I found it and it was full price, it was extremely cheap. Right, okay, right. I mean it's right. like it's been right. thrown together by yeah, yeah, yeah. you know okay. so in about nothing. ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so at its highest price, shower with your dad simulator twenty fifteen, do you still shower with your dad? Is 79 English pence. <laughs> it, has, okay, it, has nice. a, it has a historical low price of 52 pence. <laughs> That's a 20 only a 20% discount. That's hideous. I it's don't terrible, buy a Steam game unless it's at least 70% discount. <laughs> No, that's good. Big sir, can I trade? Percent. Can I trade some Steam cards for your show with your dad simulator again? I might buy it and get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> it probably costs Valve more to refund it in like in my actionable time by somebody than it does for him to just say, "Do you know what? Keep it." Right. <laughs> money. So let's let's allocate some points. And Danny, would you buy it at full price? No, would you buy it at the lowest historical price? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's literally no reason for me to play that game. <laughs> literally no reason. I think <laughs> I think I've probably had more fun with talking this, about it than I would actually have playing it. This is Danny's I, homophobia creeping in again. He's just he, I, he's just a bit afraid of of Sharon with my dad. Of, dad, of dad people dumb. thinking ill of him, you know. Nothing to be ashamed I, of, Danny. I know it's pens, but it's just like <laughs> It's like it's paying to like burden my Steam library further. Like, do you know what I mean? It's always going to be there, and I can hide it, but I'll know. <laughs> you see, I understand that completely because I have bought it for people just to send it to them <laughs> because it's so cheap and it's such a confusing gift to receive. <laughs> now, do you know what? I'm going to change my answer to yes. I'll buy it. Not for me though. I'm going to do what you did. Uh, that that <laughs> still that counts. Count as a buy. <laughs> buy it for a, yeah, um, a mate that you that you think needs a new game. Well, let's, I tell you what, Matt, buy it for Danny. Oh Fine. God, because no. he, he hasn't got many. <laughs> at least I'll have a game to talk about next. I've week. got quite a few. God Almighty, <laughs> I've got quite a few games. I don't think showering with my dad simulator. All right, to be added. so so Danny, is that an, is that no it's points like, or half a point from it, you? I'll give it a half a point just so I can like. So you wouldn't it, buy it at fifty nine with pence, but you would buy it at whatever the lower. Price was it, no, it was seventy nine, wasn't it? The, the seventy nine. So you wouldn't pounds. go for seventy nine, but you would buy it for thirty. Fifty two pence. Fifty two pence. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy fifty two pence as a laugh to send someone on their birthday as a. Oh my god, I received a Steam gift. What is this? Okay, right. It is such a cheap game, um, and when I came across it on Steam, I didn't buy it, so I have to give you no points. I'd, it's such a good good sell though. I'd give you I'd give you a point just for that, but I can't because that's the rules of the competition. Well, that's that then. I'm sorry. It's, you got half a point out of it, which it, it I mean, looks fucking shit as well. It looks <laughs> utterly shit. I, I think I've probably spent more time explaining it to you guys than I have playing it. <laughs> yeah. In fact, let me just quickly fact check that because I I do believe that I have not exactly <laughs> been. The number one played uh, fan. When I found it, when I found it, it was it, we were looking for co-op games to play with my mates, and and again we were looking for ridiculous simulators to play. And um, there was another game we talked about last week that I bought at that time, and it was about five quid, and it was that Think of the Children, where you, oh yeah, where you're basically your parents trying to not trying to stop your kids from killing themselves and getting run over and drown in the pools and burn themselves to death in the barbecue and things like that. Okay. It actually has quite a good campaign in it. It's quite funny. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so that's zero zero point five from Danny and zero from me. I'm sorry, Matt, but 
It's fine. It's only because I have I didn't buy it when I came across it. Right, so we have some points to allocate. We're going to do this, the, the competition Ooh. summary now. Danny, have you had time to review episode 71, where you weren't here, and I was selling Matt Ultimate Chicken Horse? Yes. And would you buy Ultimate Chicken Horse for yes. full price? Yes. We don't need to go to the prices then? Nope. All right. You would buy it full price? One whole point. Okay, right. I don't think there's anything else to allocate. So, season total so far, and we haven't allocated added points, which we're going to do in a minute. Uh, season totals so far are <laughs> in third place with, and I can <laughs> I'll let you guess who this is. <laughs> One point six, isn't it? <laughs> 1.164999 9, 9, 9, reoccurring <laughs> points is Danny. Yep. <laughs> and let's see which games he got some points for. So, Danny, you got Enter the Gungeon. You got 0. 0.5 points from me, uh, which I'm actually going to play soon. I haven't added it to any wish list, but I am going to play soon um, because it's on the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah, man, I got that mm. this week. Um, so, I'm going to give, we're going to give one whole point if it's on someone's wish, wish list just to make it easy. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a point for that for me. Matt, have you got Enter the Gungeon on your list? Um, or no, have you bought it? I I owned it prior to that on okay. two platforms, so... Okay, so should, I... should we give 0. 0.5 for Wishlist and 1 for Own, then? So you get 1.5 points, then, for that one? That would have... I, I already had it before he pitched it. it you was, did? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I remember yeah. the So it would be... It would, only be your, it, it would only be yours then, Chris, unless you wanted to duck. No, no, I'm Matt going to give it retrospectively as well, because you didn't know at the time. So you've got 1.5. I'm going to be fair here, I think. That's that's 1.5 points. Okay, so uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse, has anybody added that to the wish list or bought it since? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay, zero points. Undertale, has anybody added that to the wish list or bought it? Oh, sorry, I haven't. I did buy it, but I, I returned it, so I should really give you minus one point for that. I think that, I bought it before you sold it, though, as well. I think you did. Kingdom New that Lands, works. anybody add that to the list? Um, I don't think I'll I have did. to check that very quickly. So carry on, and I will let you know. So I apologies. feel like I did add it to my wish list. Apologies to those on the podcast listening, and they will hear some tapping going on at our keyboards as we all feverishly check our Steam wish lists. It's not just Steam as well, by the way. It can, it can yeah, also... Uh, be on Switch or any other platform? Um, I haven't added it, no. And I haven't bought it. Okay, so, since the spell black Blacklist, we can both say zero to that, because we <laughs> said get to hook. Uh, typing of the Dead. Let's have I a quick look. No. I haven't added mm. that to my wish list, and I haven't bought it. Danny? Uh, I have not. RimWorld, nobody liked that game even though it's the best game in the world, so I can comfortably say you haven't added that to your wish list. Unfortunately, mm, I did not add Kingdom nope. New Lands to my wish list. Okay, so zero for that. And WW3, I haven't. Matt? Uh, no, although I did. I do remember looking at the Steam page for it, but I think it didn't really appeal to me. Okay, and then Shower With Your Dad Simulator. Zero. Unless Danny's going to add it to his wish list now. I don't need to. Okay. He's already he's already bought it. Right. So the <laughs> only weirdly the only person who got any bonus points there is uh, is Danny. But it's fine because I sucked at selling so many that games anyway. One point. Oh my lord. The, right. The running. The runnings. Oh, oh they've been switched up a little bit. Danny's still in last place. <laughs> 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 Even though we didn't change the points. So last place is Danny. Two point six six four nine 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 reoccurring. Then it's Matt. Hang on. Yes. Then it's Matt with 2.75 points. And then it's me with 3.5 points. Ooh. Nice. I thought it'd be a bit more interesting than that by the end of the conversation. So there, those have been listening for the last 10 episodes. They've now got the, the conclusion. Final, yeah, final conclusion. You can mark it off. We'll probably never <laughs> play this game ever again. <sighs> so anyway, shall we, shall we move on? We shall. Do I get anything? Are you going to send me anything? 
Um, I could send you a copy of Shadow of <laughs> the <laughs> <That's really like. laughs> That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you 0. 0.5 points for that, and you'll 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 move above Matt then. Oh yeah, <laughs> so you'll get second place. Ah, ah, but then if he's bought it, I'll get bonus points oh. as well. Oh, oh god, he will. So, and then so, also, and I'll then own I'll it, win. so you'll get additional bonus points. So you yeah, will buy it. Could really ruin ah, it. For 50p, I could move up in the world if I buy it and send it to Danny, and then he re-gifts it to you. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to do that right now, then let's work it out. Wow. <laughs> no. Not <laughs> oh, really. no, exactly. It, right, it's anyway. not worth 50p for me. <laughs> so let's let's move on. So we were we the, our last season special, we um we had like a subject that we talked about. We were gonna do that this week, but we've everything's just gone to shit the last three weeks and we've not really done the show as proper, hence why we actually did the competition today, not just the summary. Um so we're gonna do our normal flashback episode today. I talked about tons of games last week. I'm gonna try not to talk about the same ones. Um, I've got new games to talk about, but we all have something on our list and we all have some new stuff on our list as well this week. So I'm going to let um, Danny start, since Danny's been absent. I have. It's very so... rarely has anything interesting to say. <laughs> so I played <laughs> the twenty, the free weekend. I was going to call it a beta, it wasn't. The free weekend to a game called Hell Let Loose, which is... Stereo, like typically down a military shooter avenue for me. Um, think I remember I, if everyone can just cast their minds back to when I talked about squad, mm -hmm. similar thing, but World War II and World War II weapons. It was okay, but it's twenty four ninety nine to buy it outright, and the types of the type of gameplay you get out of it is very much like a battlefield game but it's got the mechanics in there to be something more it's supposed to be squad based everyone kind of communicates and gets orders from places but nobody talks on it and i don't know if that was just an influx of new players for the free weekend but you would have thought in squad to compare the two there is always somebody talking in the squad chat, even if nobody replies, the squad leader's always dishing out orders, but I played the game and literally nobody talked, so it kind of just felt like a bit of a... like another battlefield, but older. Mm, yeah. Like, set up, obviously not one of the modern battlefields, going back to, like, the 1942 era, with prettier graphics, really. Um, the free weekend was eye-opening, though, because I would I would have probably dunked 24 on it, 25 quid on it. Kind of glad I didn't, though. And I'm 20 very quid. glad. Mm. 20 quid yeah, right 20 now. 20 quid now, yeah. 24 when we play the free weekend. Um, it's it's just your stereotypical World War II loadouts. There's nothing special going on with the mechanics. It was kind of satisfying to shoot people. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to... like. I don't know what element it is of a game that makes it satisfying. I don't know if it's the gunplay or the effects of or the sound design. One of those three. I was, often find the sound... Um, think, of a weapon, you know, the impact sound and the actual sound and the feel of shooting it, the accuracy of the gun as well makes a big difference when it's, depending on what type of gun it is. Yeah. I still adhere that, like, the shotgun in Quake and Quake 2, the, the, the super shotgun in Quake 2 specifically, it just, it's it's un, it's unrealistic in the real world, but it feels satisfying to shoot it. It's one of the most satisfying and getting clo up close to somebody and shooting them in the face and taking 200 armor and 100 health off immediately. It's like, yeah, it's just, right, and I know how to use this weapon, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it did it did bring that to the table. It definitely had very nice gunplay and very nice satisfaction when you shot someone and they died. Um, but other than that, it kind of didn't really bring anything new to the table. It's kind of just a boilerplate. Looks like there's deployables deployables in terms of i can see like, someone trying to deploy like uh i'm just watching the steam there's someone streaming live on steam right now and uh yeah they're deploying something in a forest it looked like a supply quite a big supply bench and then they've run so, off, so um the only thing i can think that being might be like a mobile spawn point so it has okay. like a front system in there so when you're if you take I think it's Omaha Beach, for example, where they've got all the like troop carriers hitting the shores. You can't just go up and flank around either side and what have you. 
you literally have to kind of play it out how they want you to play it out. So there is a front system. If you go past the front and you're on enemy lines, it's kind of like a bit like gets the back to the battle arena kind of thing. It's an off, so offside kind of, rule. Yeah, <laughs> basically, which was a bit jarring. It was like, oh, fuck, you know, kind of need to get up here. And it did fall in the wrong place sometimes. And um, that ties in because if you are at the front line and get killed, you don't really want to go all the way back to the start and just, you know, get on a you know from the boats again climb all the way up the beach which is hard enough anyway mm. and uh and get back to the front line so that that bench may be some kind of mobile spawn point or a resupply point for people who were spawning around that area I, yeah the one that i just saw i think was a supply at least looked like he spawned somewhere else now and he yeah. died <laughs> yeah um yeah it was, it was it was interesting something new i picked up just to see what it was like i think a couple of other guys picked it up as well um just for the free weekend and it was yeah, average. I would. I'm glad I've had the free weekend to not put money into that game though, because I've already got like two or three like it. So mm. I'm team fine. team seventeen publishers though. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're doing quite a lot recently, uh, publishing quite a lot of games. So it's an indie studio in that instance. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks, looks nice. Yeah, it does. Um, not something I'd pour much out many hours into. Um, it's it's one of those where you definitely want to try and get a lot of people in that you know and mm. would actually talk properly on some kind of communication system like discord or TeamSpeak to actually kind of have an impact when everyone was playing like single lone wolf kind of deal didn't really work and that's kind of what it just devolved into very quickly um so yeah that was hell let loose um fair enough <clears throat> anybody let someone else have a go or I yeah Matt, Matt, go on. have you got anything uh anything you played new this week um, well, new this week for me, as for you, Chris, is The Outer Worlds mm. by Obsidian, and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I played I've, about uh, three days solid of it now, uh, maybe two days solid. Well, I've played about three hours. <laughs> so I've, I've got I, uh, a few opinions, but yeah, go on, tell us what you think. So far, so good. Um, it feels very much like a natural evolution of what they did so right when they made Fallout New Vegas. It's obviously they've had to change the story, but it it does kind of feel like they've taken they've taken the torch and ran with it, whereas Bethesda took the torch and just kind of shoved it in a toilet. And <laughs> um, it just feels like they they took everything that worked so well. They got rid of the really janky engine that um, New Vegas had. And they've just had everything to everything to shoot for, and it feels like for me they've hit most of the targets. Like you know, there's the combat's decent enough. There's a lot of weapon choice. There's you've got the followers that work pretty well in combat. You've got the modification system. You've got great environments to run around in. You've got plenty of dialogue, not just you know four choices with basically all the same result. It's it's just <laughs> it's med Bethesda look like absolute idiots to me like I, I for what they're doing with fallout now to see obsidian just come and go actually this is probably what you should have done it it's like a night and day comparison that you can't really ignore like this is it's exactly what the new fallout game should be but it's not it's something new and it's something interesting and yeah i'm really enjoying it i'm gonna play some more after the show mm. um I, well, I said i've been playing it almost solely during the days uh, at the moment um I I agree with you largely. I said I have not played New Vegas to a great extent. I do really want to go back and have a go of it. Um, so I've been told by everybody it's awesome. Um, to me, yes, it's beautiful and it's pretty. Um, I'm enjoying the gameplay. I'm enjoying the companions and the the way that they speak to each other, <clears throat> the way that the story's kind of unfolding slowly i've got a few criticisms um the i don't necessarily agree that the companions in combat are particularly useful i don't know if i'm not quite understood the uh kind of the mechanics or the you know the the loadout system very well i don't really understand what the uniqueness between the characters is there's a few skills that one have got. It seems like you, they've, they've got skills, like someone comes along with lock picking and hacking, and they kind of get added to your pool 
um, somehow, and then you can then lock pick and hack better, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I think that's how it works, I think. Um, in combat, most of the time they're dying, my, my, and I'm not telling them to do anything, they're just going off and doing their own thing. Um, you can only command all of you, like all of your companions, to go to a place or to attack, or you can't do them individually. So there's no like you go and stand over there and flank that side, and you go and flank that side. And I want a bit more control normally. And the story and the feeling of the game feels very, very Mass Effect in general. I don't know if you've played the Mass Effect games, but it feels almost exactly like Mass Effect with a tongue-in-cheek kind of comedy to the script, uh, to the writing, which is no bad thing because I enjoyed Mass Effect. Um, Andromeda not as much as the others, but I've I've enjoyed it so um, enjoyed the franchise generally. I like it. It doesn't feel as deep or as complex as Bethesda games do, and a lot. And so far, I've been to three, four unique. Yeah, four, including my own ship, four unique locations, and they're not very big, and there's not that much to do there. There may be later on in the game, you may come back and, the, you know, the, the environment might change, you know. I know that the first place I've went, I know that some of my decisions have altered things, and if I go back, it sounds like the characters have, that have been talking, and it sounds like things might have changed. So I need to invest a bit more time before I can really give an opinion on that, I think. But so far, I'm not... It looks beautiful. It's gorgeous to play, and the gunplay is very, very satisfying. The guns are f uh, satisfying to shoot. I put it on the hardest setting, I think I was telling you um, mm -hmm. the other day. I put it on Supernova setting or whatever, because I like my survival games where you have to eat and sleep and drink to survive. But I didn't feel right in this game. Um, I wasn't dying necessarily. I wasn't like finding it too difficult. But the the fast travel thing was annoying me a little bit, and the saving as well. Um, sometimes in these kind of games, you come to an area, and it doesn't really tell you what level the characters are, that the enemies are, and you get killed almost immediately, and you've got no comeback. And if you haven't saved for ages, and you've done loads of things, like you've explored three separate caves, it's an open area, you've you've explored and emptied out loads of caves, you've got you've done loads of crafting, and you've changed your loadout and your enemy, your uh, you guys and that and then you accidentally walk into a camp full of fucking vicious beasts that are level 500 and knack you you die and it's like oh and you can't save randomly on the on the supernova setting so i've dropped it down to hard and i'm finding the game fairly easy now it's it's gone and gone kind of one extreme to another so there might be some balancing maybe i don't know uh, i but, presume there will be some balance to come with it yeah um, but overall i do i am enjoying it i have my criticisms only because it's got so many similarities to Mass Effect. It's almost like it's they've taken Mass Effect and and Fallout, mushed them together, and and tried to make the writing more tongue in cheek and funnier. I suppose there's, there's a lot of some similarities to, between how the systems work, but Mass Effect has more control over your characters and a bit more depth as well in the characters. But I, again, I can't really comment on that that much because I haven't played it enough. Does it play like enough. a Fallout game? We would you would expect because is it completely different? It to me it plays quite similar to like well to New Vegas. It, it's obviously okay. a, a lot's been improved in the intervening however many years, it like ten years since New Vegas, maybe more, twelve years. I remember a lot, a lot, a lot's been kind of streamlined, and a lot of things aren't as like needlessly complex as the. They might have been like they've done away with a lot of mini games and stuff for things like lock picking. So it's just a case of you know if you've got if you can do it, skill you can checks. do it basically. Yeah. yeah. So it's, okay. it still has the skill checks and things, but it's just it's a bit more streamlined. Yeah. I'm finding um, I'm finding everything very very easy as well. Like I can I can lock pick almost everything in anything at the moment. I've got um, you, there's there's a few different items you use to do lock picking. There's like three different items, I think, and I haven't figured out how it how that works. But most because my my lock picking skill is so high already, only a couple of days into the playing the game, that everything is you don't need to use any items. You can just lock pick, you know, and, and unlock mm. everything. There's a few that I can't, and there's sometimes it's like right, you need seven of them to do it, and I've only got ten or whatever. Uh, but they're quite easy to come by. It's very 
very rare that I need to go away and come back and do something. Also with the dialogue as well. There are lots of options and lots and lots of dialogue. I've spent most of my time in conversations. Um, and I've got such high dialogue skills that I've maybe only seen two, maybe three times an option being greyed out. And that's because I chose a lot of buffs on those and my characters have all got buffs on it, all the people in my party. And I've been putting lots and lots of skill points into it. There's an abundance of skill points. Every time you level up, you get 10 skill skill points to allocate across quite a few different things. I think that'll change when you get to level 50. You start allocating them in individual skills rather than groups of skills. So you've got mm. like your dialogue skills, which are persuasion, lie, and something else. Deception, possibly. Um, no, that's a lie, isn't it? There's another Intim one anyway. Intimidation. Intimidation, yeah. And I've I said I've got loads of points in them. When you hit 50 for all of those points, or one of those points, um, one of those sub-categories rather, you can start allocating individual points in them, but you can also still allocate them to the top skill. I don't know if you've hit 50 on any of them yet. Probably no. not if you've <laughs> not played it as much. Um, <clears throat> once you hit 50, you can keep allocating it to the top skill, but it doesn't allocate it to the one that's hit 50. So if you've got three skills in the tree, right. it'll keep allocating to the other two skills until they hit 50, and then you have to put them into individual ones. So after 50, I think it might, maybe it'll open up a bit more. Maybe they're just making it easy for people, making it more accessible for people who want to play it casually. And then the people who want to go hardcore and like really explore all the side missions. Uh, it sounds to me like it's just a soft cap. So you hit 50 with kind of the, the thing and it's like, okay, well, you know, you, you're decent enough at this now, but if you want to really specialize, you're going to have to specialize. You can't just keep saying like, I want to be good at all talking. It's like, I've got to be good at, you know, talking to this man and I've got to be good at talking to women. And God knows that there's no skill points for that. Yeah. Oh, well, that's another thing, actually. I not related to that. They've made they've not made a big thing out of um, and there's only one, two times this has occurred so far of um, of same sex relationships or anything like that. It's just part of the dialogue, and I really like that. I like the fact that they didn't the the dialogue options. There's no bigotry in the dialogue options for one, which I would wouldn't expect anywhere these days. But there's also one of the the one of my main kind of followers just said something about someone that they were into. And it was just casual part of the conversation and they hadn't yeah. mentioned it previous to that. And I really liked the fact that the, I mean, I'm glad that the world's going that way personally. Let's not get into the political stuff too much, but yeah. I'm, I'm glad the world's going that way. And I'm glad that the games industry is picking up on that and making it more accessible, I suppose, to, yeah. to a wider range of people, you know? Yeah, so, I, I think that's more kind of true to life, though, isn't it? It's not about like being overt with it. It's just about like it's a very casual thing in a casual conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry, yeah. Danny. No, you're right. I was just wondering what the scope of the game is. So I, I've not like looked much up on Outer Worlds at all, but I'm assuming you mentioned a ship earlier. So you've got a ship, and I'm assuming there are worlds that you can visit, hence the unique locations. How many are there? Is there are there a lot, or is it kind of like a small subset? with lots of things to hopefully do on each one. How far have you got, Matt? Um, I am in the... I'm just about to re-divert the power. So I'm still quite early on in the game. Okay, right. So I won't spoil I won't spoil anything after that then, um, other than Matt already knows there's a ship um, and the people who are listening as well. There may be some spoilers here, but, you know, be aware of that I, I, um, i'm not very far into the game at all so i'm not i won't go into too much detail but the, yes there are other places to visit um, there are outer worlds to there visit. are outer worlds i think i mean when you initially look at like in mass effect you get a map and you can see kind of or an overview of the colony as they call it um a few places are available to you there are a few places that are locked and then there are places that aren't displayed on the map that I've started to unlock, so I don't know how much. I, when I looked at the, the okay. map initially, I thought I was a bit underwhelmed, and I thought, are all of these worlds, are all of these areas going to be as small as the starting area and the second area yeah. that I've been to? I'm on my third area now, I think, um, and I had a, about three or four choices. Bearing in mind that I'm a side mission hall, and I do everything side mission before I touch the main mission, so I've opened quite a lot of the areas. But I think 
I'm hoping there's going to be more to it, and I'm hoping the bigger planets that you see are going to be big areas to explore. When I yeah. say that, though, that you're the first, the first planet is substantial. I mean, it's it's boxed, but it's there's. I think there's still bits I haven't seen in it, but I've I've explored quite a lot of it as well. So, I mean, I, I personally think there's more to having like a curated experience than to just have a massive sandbox. Like, you don't always need to have an empty sandbox. I'd rather it be like a well-designed level, yeah, with distinct areas than just an empty, empty wasteland. I absolutely yeah, agree like... <laughs> with that, but I also think that games like I mean I know it's got a lot of a lot of stick, but like Fallout Four, yes, there was lots of open areas, but everywhere felt even though it was wasteland, it still felt distinct, and there was always things going on, and there was always something to sidetrack you and keep you interested, and there wasn't too many prefabricated like worlds and uh, caves and you know buildings yeah, and stuff. Small... It's all contained there, objects, yeah. There were some things that were repeated. I mean, I've already seen some things repeated in Outer Worlds, but they have to with these big games. But so far, yeah, the experience is good. I'm enjoying it. I've got a lot of love for it so far, despite my criticisms. But I'm hoping as I figure more out about the game, I'll get, I don't know, I'll fall in love with it yeah. a bit more than I am. Yeah, well, as I found out, I've still got Game Pass, so I'm going to get it downloaded, give it a go, because I have literally no expectations going in. And then... I think that'll be, probably surprise me. That's the best way to be with it. Just go in, clean slate, see what you think. Yeah. I think if you just did the main missions, you could probably get through the game fairly quickly. I, I, get, I don't know that for certain, but I, you, it's like any of these games. If you're the kind of person who likes to explore and likes to be sidetracked and likes to go, ooh, look, ooh, there's so much shiny over there. I mean, I ended up doing a ton of the side missions before I even picked the missions up from the the people that I should have picked them up for. But that's the kind of thing that I I do, yeah. you know. I can't be doing with picking up a main quest. Like, a lot of the time in these RPG games, they kind of throw you in and you've done the first quest and it's like, open the story up. And then when a game sidetracks you too well and you do all these side missions and you come back to the main story, you're like, what? What was going on now? Can't can't quite remember. That annoys me. And by so the I time think... you get back to the main story, you're like way over leveled and everything's a cake. <laughs> everything, walk. yeah, yeah. So I might just if I'm playing it, I'll probably play it to do with the side missions primarily, and then really like drill the main quest line, much mm. like I did before that. Really, I haven't felt like and apart from when I first started the game and I had it on the hardest setting and I kind of went off the path straight away as soon as you come out of the ship or whatever you know as soon as, as soon as you wake up basically um i came i went off to this like wreck thing and i, I just went to go and investigate it and i got I, I, my health just flew down within seconds because the <laughs> enemy's attacking me and i didn't die i ran off and i didn't die. i was like just about survived um and i realized either this game is hard or this setting is hard Went back to it on hard mode. I'd leveled up maybe three or four levels by that point, um, and I could do it. So I don't know yeah. if the enemies level with you or not. I think they might, because there's no levels above the heads or anything like that. I'd presume so. Um, I, I find if they don't, then you all, you, you know, you overpower stuff too easily. Like you'd get a few levels behind you, and everything's just there's no challenge to the game yeah. anymore. Mm. Saying that, I don't feel like I've had much of a challenge so far, apart from my companions dying. On Supernova setting, if your companions die, they die. They're dead. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which, Super I mean, I'd, I'd have been dead a million times over by now, you know, and I'd have no companions and I'd have no side missions for them and, like, companion missions and whatever. So I'm kind of glad I turned that off, to be fair, before I lost anybody. Yeah. Yeah, good. But so far, I recommend, especially on the Game Pass for a quid at the moment. You can't, yeah, you can't go wrong with that. That is extremely it's, good bargain. It's, a, for a it's fresh an game. absolute, absolute <laughs> yeah. bargain. Definitely. All right, Danny, anything else? I picked up the new Call of Duty. Yep. And to much dismay, people are like, oh, great, another Call of Duty. And I was thinking the same. I was actually originally not going to buy the game. I was staying well clear because, like with many games, like Advanced Warfare, I never really paid attention to it. As soon as anything comes into a game that's just like slightly more advanced than we actually have, i.e. automatic sentry turrets, I'm out. It's just too much. And 
Modern Warfare has maybe two things that are unrealistic. Probably a little like wheeled robot with a gun on it. And there is a sentry gun. <laughs> but it's not like stupid out, you know, out there with it. It surprised the shit out of me with how good of a story it was and how mm. much they've progressed in terms of changing up the feel of the game. It really took took me by surprise, to be honest. They've added in like a mounting system, which isn't like amazing, especially not for multiplayer, but for the single player and also the co-op, which is called Spec Ops as usual, where it's a bit slower when you're going against bots with friends, it kind of works and it's a new mechanic, interesting, and it it's helpful because it kind of aids you in terms of steadying your guns and whatever else. So the campaign blew me away because the, the game looks really nice. They've definitely done, you know, it's not the good, it's not the good old joke of, oh, look, they've just copied and pasted the same kind of like framework and reused assets and just like put them in different orders kind of thing. They've really have changed up the game quite a lot. The multiplayer is fun, satisfying. The gunplay is brilliant. The customization on the guns is brilliant. It's almost to the level of the World War Three game I was talking about a couple of weeks back, where I was saying it's really get drilling down into how you can configure weapons. Um, it's getting close to that level, and yeah, I'm just it just really surprised me. Just to say that I've not touched a Call of Duty game since literally the last Modern Warfare, which was three. I kind of skipped out on all the Black Ops crap because that just got way too like what's the word like way too hairy Silly. too quickly it's just yeah daft and i didn't really appreciate it um the advanced warfare again i looked into that it was just like a bit too like don't like the jumping around with like bionic legs and stuff and to say yeah from modern warfare 3 to this it's a big jump and it performs really well as well on my rig and i didn't expect that i think expected to, for it to look so pretty it should really be you know kind of dragging down in the frames absolutely Stella, not you know, had a single hitch. You know, I've got to say, um, AAA games, I've been quite impressed with recently in terms of them working on my rig really well. I mean, I've got quite a good rig anyway, but even on my last rig, AAA games, not all of them, but quite a lot of the time, performing excellently. And the, re and the reason I noticed that is because I play so many indie games, really badly optimised indie games by small teams that don't have the resources to put the cue, you know, the quality assurance in place for that. And I think the big developers, I have to give them the props there, most of the time have a, you know, a level of QA that, that can't be achieved with a small team. And I think it comes, it comes from developing for consoles, really, I think, doesn't it? Having that limited hardware that they have to get the game running nicely on. Now, I've not seen any PS4 or Xbox footage, but it's it's also not a port you know when you can tell when something's a port on pc when it's kind of like you, you load it up it's got maybe a field of view slider turn on the aliasing off and you've got graphics high low and sorry high medium and low and that's it it kind of leaves a you janky that. janky ui that doesn't work quite well yeah. with a mouse and keyboard yeah they have lit it literally holds no punches when it comes to the customization in that menu on pc it is like almost like it was built from the ground up for it it's got every graphical option under the sun every key rebinding weird quirky control scheme setting you would ever want and yeah when you get into them you can always tell a lot by like how much effort's gone into the ui and the, and the game's menu system they've done a really good job on the menu system as sad as that sounds but it it says a lot for how much care they put into the game for the pc which i'm glad to see because they didn't used to it always used to be the console mm. market for that type of game and it's just something to pick up and play with like people who are on ts on some nights and i'm just just having just daft silly fun with it it's just it's nothing too serious i'm not a sweaty cod player it's just I bought it on a whim. It surprised me. I was happy with it. I don't feel like I've wasted 50 quid at all. I've actually not paid that much money for a game in a long time. Probably the... Maybe Monster Hunter was closest. Maybe it was like 40 quid. But I don't often pay for big big titles. Because um, once you've... Once it's out of your wallet, 50 quid's a lot of money in it, really. Mm. It's not... What's the grind like? Awesome. The grind for... Modern just, Warfare. Modern... I mean, do, do you, do you have... Do you feel compelled to be playing it to keep up with your mates? I don't know. Not really, because 
this I mean when you judge it by keeping up with your mates what what are you keeping up with them for well is that's what I mean because just... there's some games isn't there where if you fall behind your friends like I remember oh um, right modern Nintendo, warfare like, queue- 2 and queuing and stuff like that for games and game types I don't understand what what's queuing so when you so when you're queuing for game types games like counter strike will stop you from queuing with people who are so many levels below you yeah it doesn't do that no it no, so it's not just queuing, so that and also competing with other people who have like sim- if you're if you're a similar level, you have the same kind of unlocks available, and you you know you you don't have the advantage that you'd have. Yeah, so it kind of brings me on to the final point I'll say about the game is it 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 changes Call of Duty, and I've yet to get used to this. Because Call of Duty for me is running around like a, a headless chicken and just spraying and praying at everything you can possibly find at the quickest amount of time possible, almost like an arena shooter. Like, like, well, it is an arena shooter. Like, like shoot, Quake, like Quake, for example, where you're like be hopping around all the time. That's kind of like what the expectation is for a Call of Duty. But they've kind of, because of the mounting system and the way that that like how slow you are in the game, it's no longer about that. You can hold tactical angles better camping pays off rewards and people get really salty about it but play the game however you can want to play it and it does allow you to slow that gameplay down and still come out on top so even if people have got better attachments than you and better weapons doesn't matter because if you've got that more that tactical advantage over them and actually think about how you're playing then you can actually overcome anybody really it's not about like who shoot who shot first and with what gun anymore like it used to be so if you Head to head with somebody, with like he's got an AK, you've got the starting weapon. Obviously, he would win because his DPM is a lot more. Mm. But in terms of like, yeah, the game allows you to just be a little bit more tactical now with holding hours, holding angles, and power positions is how it's phrased. There's a lot of that in the new maps and stuff like that. They've changed it up massively. Do you think they're making moves towards making it much more of an esports game? But- I'm thinking they're kind of going the way that uh, Ubi did with Siege, in that they mm. aren't going to release any more Modern Warfare games. What they'll likely end up doing is, for the fan service, keep and the campaign is still left open ended. I'll just say that they're keeping the. I think they're going to do the fan service on the DLC side. I don't know if it will if it will be charged or what, but I think they'll keep releasing extra modules for the campaign, and then the multiplayer. I think they're going to try and do what Siege did, where it's basically they have seasons and try and push the game forward through patches and free patches just to keep people playing. But I haven't seen any inkling of like microtransactions so far. There's just nothing there. But I See, think they might be adding it. That's not really, yet. Really interesting, because I remember back in day, back in day when we played <laughs> Quake. When I had were... a Commodore 32, they came out before 64. Vic 20, mate. Vic 20. <laughs> what it's all about. Um, but when no, back back when you know I played, I played Quake 2, yeah. We were waiting for the next patch. We were waiting for the next like community map release that was really good that we could we could all kind of get behind and figure out and learn and know how to hold points on the map and yeah. you know we could figure out tactics for it and we'd practice every week and we'd we'd have a community as well. We'd jump in between IRC channels and talk to people and arrange clan games and and say right these are you know these are the maps we're going to be playing and when a new patch I remember when um 3.2 Quake 2 3.2 patch that was the the last decent patch that was available and then I think 3.21 they for some really weird reason I mean 10 year 5 years after its release or whatever they decided to patch the physics bugs i.e. the bunny hopping and the circle jumping and the rocket jumping okay and the community just went nuts and it you know they, they rolled it back thank god but it was just like <laughs> I remember it happening, and it's just like, well, what, what, you've just completely nerfed the game. But that was that's what built the community around a single game, not a, around building this, not a, re, needing to release a new game every five minutes. I mean, I don't know if that was just the technology at the time. You know, it was easier to to develop a, a patch than it was to, and release. Oh, it was more profitable rather to develop and release a patch than it would be to develop and release a new game. I don't know, it was a lot harder then because they didn't have all of these SDKs that they created to, to develop games. And yeah. They didn't have engines in place that, that made, mitigated a lot of the effort they needed to put in. But it's interesting that they're going, that, that some AAA games are going back, almost back to that model. 
I prefer it, if I'm honest, because it keeps me... It keeps me and if I'm with a group of friends not fragmented anymore, if you know mm. what I mean. Siege did it really well because I used to have a group of friends who used to play Siege with and regardless of if a new Tom Clancy's game came out, even if there was another Rainbow Six, they wouldn't have followed the same... So they can. what I'm trying to say is they could probably release another Modern Warfare that's like a sequel or whatever, but if they continue to patch like a good solid base game and bring out seasons and bring out new weapons and bring out things to keep people engaged, really, is the gist of it. And they have the means to fund that by whatever passes they bring in. Because they usually do passes on the Call of Duty games, which I think is what they're going to end up doing with this one. Um, allowing people to pay for whatever it is you, you can they want to give you. I, I prefer that. Rather than having to jump ship to a game, because it, it seems to be only like yearly cycles, like FIFA games and stuff like that, that are just constantly churned out every year, and it's just like, well, but why they could not just, just make... could just patch the, those games yeah, exactly. and release new players and exactly. release new packs and your seasons or whatever, you know. In fact, exactly. it's ideal for that. But again, yeah. they, they aren't the games that we play because of that. They, they're for they're for people who just want the churn of, or they don't really understand that you can have patches and seasons. And... Yeah. And it's so easy to do. I say easy, it's really not. But it's, in terms of, it's sold to us as so easy to do now. It's just like, oh, you just launch a game client and it just updates for you and patches you. You can just do it. You can even play games whilst it's patching, especially with the Battle.net launcher. It tells you when a game's optimal to play. You can play through the single player whilst the multiplayer's downloading or whatever. You don't even have to be interrupted anymore. It's that good. I prefer that. It definitely keeps people together a bit longer rather than jumping ship to a new game every year. Because at the point of release, like, if someone's not got the money for it there and then, mm. they might not pick it up at all. And it kind of then, that's when you get your fragmented friend groups with games, I think. And Absolutely. It hampers, it hampers it. I very rarely buy a game full... I mean, it's less something I'm really excited about. Cyberpunk is probably going to be the first game I reckon I'll buy on full. release. I say that, I got Lynx Awakening on release. I probably shouldn't have done I should have left that. But then again, it's a Nintendo game and it's never going to come down in price. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, but Cyberpunk, I mean, I nearly went for the Outer Worlds and I probably would have done if if Matt hadn't mentioned the Game Pass to me. Um, <laughs> and I'm still even considering buying it. I'm going to leave, you know, play a little bit more and I might even go, right, I want I want to, I want to own this game, you know, because it's, it's so good. But is that just, I don't know, is that just because I want to give the developers some money or is it because I'm going to play it again? Give developers more money, basically. You don't feel know. like they deserve more than a quid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I think is fair. <laughs> Saying that. I, uh, I I imagine we'll get quite the bonus from Microsoft for how popular it's probably made um, the yeah. Game Pass. I think a lot of people have capitalised on that. Oh, play Outer Worlds for a pound. You know, it's, it's not as... Uh, it's not as thrifty as it sounds. They will still make a hell of a lot of money off that because, you know, you might only get like, say, 10,000 people buy the game at 50 quid or a million people play it for a pound. Mm. Oh, yeah. But even though it's spread across, I mean, the promo for a month is spread across um, all the developers in, on the platform at that time, as in that's how they do it. And the Game Pass, they're licensing out games and giving each developer a cut of however many uh, subscriptions they have. More complicated than that. They won't pay them the subscription price. They'll pay them They'll pay them a license fee. Yeah. And they'll have paid them already. But based on volume, they would give the developers more money if more people are on the platform. Would maybe, maybe. generally assume? I don't know. They'll have metrics on it, but I don't. Yeah. I, I think it would be... I don't... I, I, I think it would be difficult for them to do that and make any money whatsoever. Okay. They're probably more likely. I mean, remember Obsidian are owned by Microsoft as well. Yeah, so it's not. It's like an. It's not thing. the same because they're a Microsoft yeah. developer, but there's other there's other games on there that aren't owned by Microsoft. So. Yeah. Not many, probably. But <laughs> yeah, but I you know it's, it's. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh, we just lost Matt. Well, let's keep Matt's going. Dropped. Um. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I think I think you're right. You're totally right. You know, a million a million pounds is much better than ten thousand pounds or what? Or, or ten thousand times fifty, probably more than a million. That's I don't know. Half, I'm rubbish on that. Yeah, uh, it's but a it's, hard, yeah. hard one to call, but they'll be making money either way. They will. I, I could see them going down the route of making DLC and tying that into the game pass as well to keep people, you know, 
oh, it's coming out in three months. Oh, well, I might as well just leave my subscription. Room. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up next is the cleverness and the, oh, it's only a pound for now. But then when it goes up to two ninety nine, it's like, I'm not that fussed. I'll just keep it on. Isn't full price Game Pass something like 12? The, the top tier, is it like 12 quid? Something around I that? I think it's like something 12 or 15 quid, but that's if you have it tied in with the Xbox Game Pass as well. The PC the one fact. is the top tier is four pound. At the wow. Moment. Okay. Moment. I thought it was more for that much. It's not even worth quibbling about, is it? It's a breakfast sandwich a month. The, for the game access that changes. The way that I'm looking at this is that what I've done, I actually ran out of space on my terabyte um, <laughs> uh, games drive when I got the Game Pass uh, two days ago because I've been downloading. I got Gears Four, which I haven't played. Five, I haven't played. I've got. Um, State of Decay 2, which I've been looking forward to because I enjoyed the first one. I've got The Outer Worlds, obviously. I've got Dead Cells I want to play. Um, mm. I've got quite a lot, to be honest. And, I mean, th those just those games are going to take me months to complete, you know? But is it, is it worth... I mean, am I going to be really focused on the Game Pass games solely for the next couple of months? Yeah. Or do I want to switch between that and steam still haven't bought anything on epic you know i downloaded the client and i've got the few free games that are on there but i still not actually click the buy button i haven't bought anything on epic and i was very close to buying satisfactory Same. and i was trying to convince someone else to get it and they were holding their ground saying no i'll just wait for it on steam but i was like but it looks so good it's 3d factorio why but and i'm <sighs> do you know the problem you know the problem i've got with this i've got with um it's not the corporate stuff. It's not the, the Epic launcher, I mean. The actual Epic store itself is naff. It doesn't work. Every time I click on a game and I try and read about it or I try and add one of the free games to my pass or I try and go on to... It just doesn't work. And I have to go onto the website to actually read anything about the game and look at you know videos and things like that. The client itself is naff. Surprising, you thought they'd have put effort into that. Yeah, and it, that's what's putting me off because I don't want to invest into that platform if if it's not going to work half the time when I try and play a game through it. I mean, even the, the Microsoft Store, which is rubbish, is better. Yeah. It's yeah. better, yeah. It's, it's not very good, but it's better. So it's, I've, all, yeah. I've also got, got shut. Sh go on, sorry, got, Matt. I was going to say, it's got silly little things that people don't really use on there, like user reviews and... You know, who, who wants to know if a game's good before they buy it? Honestly, <laughs> yeah, I do. I do sometimes, but most of the time, I know what games I want to buy. You know, like I'm not. I don't care what anybody says about Cyberpunk. I'm getting it. It's simple as that. I haven't looked at anything. I've tried to avoid every single spoiler. I'm getting it, and I'm and I'm just give just take my money. You know, I'll pay whatever the price is for that game. I want it. Yeah, I'm the same. I'll, same. I'll just get it. But I'm not looking into it, and I'm avoiding spoilers. And yeah. I don't want to know what it's about. All I know is the two words of cyber and punk mean the game has a certain vibe and aesthetic. That's what I'm leaving it at. It's yeah. CD Projekt Red does Deus Ex. I'm totally down with that. I can't think of anything I'm more down with. Yeah. But both, yeah, everything in that sentence, yes. I was going to bring back uh, Sharon with your dad, but for maybe not. A bit you too stay soon. away from my dad. <laughs> And the, anyway, the Xbox Game Pass, I've got a few other games on there that I, I'm really looking forward to playing. Um, Shadow of War, I thought I'd give that a go, because you... you, have I've you did you go, go back to it, by the way? Not picked it up since. Because <laughs> you didn't like how the orcs followed you around. <laughs> but it was like the, the game was bugged. No, it's design. It's the design of the game. We'll see. Play it and let me know how your experience was, because right. I'll be able to compare. Because I definitely got just blindsided, like one general after another. And I was like, surely this isn't how it is. I'm pretty sure that happened to me in the the first game a couple yeah. of times, and I sucked it up and I dealt with it, and I still completed the game. Fair enough. That's fine. <laughs> Maybe I've just got the pacing of the game wrong. Then I don't know. I'm I... kind of expecting it to be like I can sneak if I want, but. Not if people are looking for me, that kind of just changes the entire dynamic for me then. I don't think it's particularly stealth-based, the game, but you can run away from things. Anyway, we've done all this in another episode. We've, so. We have done all that before. Uh, yeah. Crackdown 3, it's another one that I'm looking forward to having a go at. 
don't set I might have expectations st- too high. Yeah, yeah, I might have spoiled myself with Crackdown 3. I think I watched somebody compare 1 to 3. Mm. And the re- there was a lot of regression of things in that. Like, just simple little things like how the cars would transform and just bits and bobs. I mean, I enjoy a Crackdown game. I and love one the and first two. and second one. Absolutely rinse them. But, they were big though back in the day. They were they were Yeah, they were big. really there was big nothing games. like it. There was nothing like it back then. But now we've had we've had um, we've had lots of things since. You know, yeah. We've had like all of the superhero games that you can jump run, run up and down buildings on and there was another one um where you could try you were like prototype. Prototype, prototype yeah. was big, infamous. Um all of those games have all had direct influence from from Crossdown. The, the superhero sandbox is it's saturated now. Whereas mm. back then it was it was quite a bold thing to do. You know, you didn't really have much other than Superman sixty four and God help you if you're trying to play that. <laughs> Sunset Overdrive. Missed that when that came out and I, that's got like ten out of ten reviews everywhere. Everyone who's played it raves about it. Mm. So what is Sunset Overdrive? I don't know. <laughs> I just know that it's it's an open world kind of sandbox. Um you I think you're a superhero, I think. But I'm I think it's done really well apparently, but I don't know, we'll see. Um Stellaris, which is an indie game that I've had my eyes on on Steam for ages, and I, I've added that. That's, you know, it's part of the Game Pass, so I'm going to have a go at that as well. Um, that's it so far, but if I can get through them in a month and for a quid, I'll be very happy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I do, considering I've actually just got, I've got quite a lot of work coming up as well. That I've and you've spent three days on Outer Worlds. Yeah, and I don't, <laughs> I feel like I'm literally just scratching the surface. I hope I am anyway. I hope I'm yeah. not. Not I'm not going to be like disappointed by it. 50% of the way through already, just after three days. Hmm. Okay, so... Um, I'm just having a quick look at our list. Should we, should we leave everything else till next time? There's a lot of there's a lot on there, but it's kind of losing its... There, there's one other game on there that you mentioned, Duck Game. Duck Game. Which I played as well. The, the week that you put it down, because you said you put it on a couple of weeks ago, um, I've had a go of it with some mates as well now. What's your opinion? I think it is absolutely hilarious. It is. It's a game that makes its own... It's a game that isn't inherently funny. But when you play it with other people, funny shit happens because it's... Do you know what I mean? It's just like you make the fun in the game and it is it is hilarious. Just random... I don't know. I'm trying to think of some scenarios now where it was just random chaos. Like There was, there was one, right? There's one moment and it was a replay on one of our... Things yes, as well because it does the um, replays after which is brilliant by I the said, way i said to my mates i said because I, I kind of figure the mechanics out fairly quickly but i said yeah. when I played it with another set of mates i said to them um right so what when you've when you've shot the web at somebody and they go into that little bolt you can pick them up and throw off the throw them off the edge so as i <laughs> as i said that as i shot them i said i showed them and i threw them into some lava <laughs> let me show you <laughs> yeah. show you this and he's like what can I do, but, um, that and like throwing a grenade it bouncing off a wall randomly and then landing back on your face and blowing you up as well as taking yeah. your mate. You know, little stuff like that. It's... Little, I think that the nets, are, the nets are pretty funny. Some of them, some of the maps, depending on what they are, are like, just lead to funny scenarios. You can also turn on um, downloadable maps as well, which is absolutely crazy. There was one that the... was... It was like it had an anime background, just like a big uh, anime girl on <laughs> on the background, um, and it was all four of us spawned at the bottom of the map. And then, do you, do you know that gun that, that you fire and it opens up and it's a big, massive laser that shoots across the map? Yeah. It takes up like about three or four, you know, blocks of of space and shoots ac- right across the map. It was just them shooting down from the top of the level, fucking chaos oh, everywhere. Nice. We all died within seconds. I don't think anybody was like. But if you load like the, if you tick the community box, the community um, maps box, you get some quite interesting levels. There's some toss out there as well, obviously. But I don't think you can choose them. I think it just randomly. Yeah, loads just them. randomly generate. Well, picks them. Mm. I think one of the things we found, we did turn community maps on, but some of them are bad because the camera stays zoomed out all the way. And when we were playing on a TV mm. through Steam Link, so we couldn't really see where we were. 
and it was like, okay, we need to just turn the normal maps back on now to be able to see because the camera does a quite a, well. I'll say a very good job of following where you need to be and mm. containing the action within the seat, you know, set area. Yeah, if they're too um, big, then it, it's just too small. The uh, just too small to see. They don't need to be big though. The levels, it's good. It's good. Have you played yeah. it, Matt? I have. I think I've got it on Steam. Um, although I don't think I've played a lot of it, but I have seen quite a bit of gameplay of it, and it is. It's it's funny just to watch. Mm. Yeah, like by itself, it's funny. It's definitely a couch play game. Like you need to be sat next to the people that you're trouncing. It's in our rotation now. Put it that way. Yeah. It's uh, there's a few of my mates who haven't played it. They've been busy for the last few weeks, and uh, I'm looking forward to them having a go as well. Um, other than that, the only thing, other thing that I've got to mention is that I have finally, finally finished Dying Light. Finally, finally finished the Dying oh, Light probably. DLC. About um, time. And it was boring. The end, the game's brilliant, the actual DLC's brilliant, but the actual final scene, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but the final scene's just like, you know, like that arbitrary, like, a choice you sometimes get at the end of end of a game where it's choose this option for this and this option for that, you know? It, it was that at the end, and it's like the one option you did a boss fight and the other option, I'm not going to tell you, but something else happened, and it was... I chose the other option. I probably should have done the boss fight, but either way, <laughs> it, if, it apparently either option's boring, and it just it was it was like an anticlimax to a rather interesting and intriguing story. You know, it had you on this yarn for ages, and then just went right, done, black and white, bye, yep, yeah, game over. Hope you enjoyed it, <clears throat> but good. I mean, still worth the DLC. I think still worth getting the DLC. I, I really did enjoy it, especially with the buggy and the. It is odd, system. yeah, because it sounds. It seems to follow. If it if it's boring, I've not played the DLC. If it is boring, like you say, it kind of follows on from the main story, which is a bit underwhelming. Which then follows on from Dead Island, which was also boring at the end. And it's mm. just like I know they're not exactly the same studio, but they kind of like took this inspiration from it. And it's just like, can they not write a good ending? Just it's not that difficult, especially with it being so good all the way through. Yeah. Weird, strange. I think it's that pitfall of them falling into the arbitrary choice thing. It's like it. Just give us an answer. Give us a conclusion to a story. If you've written a satisfying story, don't cop out on the ending. Yeah, just stick with what yeah what you wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, either put more effort in yourselves, or put more effort into the choices that we get, or make the choices less arbitrary or less um, black and white. You know, less kind of. If we've done certain things throughout the game, and those things make a difference, then make the ending finite. Make it. Make it based on our choices throughout the game, and I know that's very difficult to do because the the variation could be huge. But you know, we're paying a lot of money for these games, and I expect it. I, by this time, you know, I expect more output. I think. Yeah. Mm. I mean, even in the outer worlds, you know, some of the missions, the out, the ending of the missions hasn't been black and white. It's been based on what I've done through the small step, you know, the few steps that I've done. Yeah. Right. Should we do our preview hot pants, our news? Should we leave that till next week? We've we've probably run well over. We've run over, but I we've mean, run over. But I don't think it. We've not got that much to talk about. We've okay, got a whole quickly, lot. just quickly blast through, through it. it. All right, Danny. Yeah. You're up. So Intel finally sort of admitted that they had fallen behind AMD um, in terms of. I'm talking lithography here of CPU. So AMD moved to seven nanometer, and Intel are trying to now do the same. It's basically just them catching up now um but amd's on top of that amd's profits are also up this quarter due to their triad of things that they are bringing together so they've got the radeon stuff the epic server stuff which is starting to pick up steam and obviously just the general sale horizon processes so their profits have been up which basically is only good news they're not failing they are actually nipping at the ne at the heels of intel as much as a lot of fanboys would say i oh, know intel for life but it's good it's bringing back the competition and i've talked about it many times before um well this is what we want we need innovation because it was getting a bit static before with the intel stuff and them swapping motherboards out and the tiktok cycles not having much difference between them like core counts were stagnant until rate you know amd came in um but it's good because it drives innovation and the only people who win is the consumer as i've said before and exactly that's what i want that's what i want been able to make that choice not always if you want the best here you go it's kind of actually do your research now, like really dig into it. So, I mean, it's yeah. been it's been painfully obvious that Intel hasn't had to compete. You know, they they could have moved to se seven nanometer a long time ago, and then 
AMD wouldn't have got a foot in the door, but they didn't. They were lazy, and you know, here we are. I <laughs> I hope they take a big chunk of of the market share from them because honestly, it needs competition. Yeah, like you say, the only people that win are us and AMD a little bit, but I'll let them have some money. Just yeah. some money. Just some. Just, some, just, just a few. Just some, billion. but I want my cheap processors. Make sure you get that in the manifesto. I'd, I I want my seventy five car processor for yeah. thirty quid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's only a small bit to bit, but it's just to keep people posted on the recent happenings. I don't think AMD is sort of like a one hit wonder this time. It's kind of it should carry on, is what I'm saying. When are Intel planning to release their seven um, NMs? Twenty twenty. Uh, not too far off then. Yeah, not sure what quarter, but probably about halfway through the year. So. I think it's a big job, isn't it, to retool it down is, to seven nanometer? It is and a big job and get it stable too, and yeah. to meet the demand. But I mean, even today, I look at Intel, but like, not that I'm like looking at rebuilding anything, but I often do like a PC part picker just to see what prices are, just to see what's going on. Like, uh, I'll often build what's called a LAN rig, and that is trying to get this like the cheapest stuff out there that's going to still perform like how i want it to um and every time intel is still even now coming up like a lot higher priced than um than amd which is bizarre because it's just forcing people down the amd route but um yeah they've always they've always done it and they think they've got something special but they really don't they're relying on brand sentiment and yeah. when they've spent that long basically no i don't want to say ripping people off but kind of you know just gouging just people a little. towing the line a bit and saying yeah well you know what what's your other option if you want a eight car processor who else are you going to go to amd well, <laughs> are amd matching the the cause though at the moment and then some <laughs> All right, okay. it's intel trying to match the cause they are they oh. were they are the opera of cars. It's like you get a car and you get a car. Everybody gets a car. <laughs> Not that you can use them in your single threaded game, but there's cars there if you need them. Exactly. It's just well, yeah, they've always... with pocket fulls of cars. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, it was Intel who had the shock. It was it was basically the fact that so they did the three seven three five seven series to sort of sneakily match and make it easy for the consumer to equate things to intel side but then added that little bit of extra on so the the, the three was it the ryzen threes were actual physical quad cores the ryzen fives were quad cores and six cores in some instances and then the sevens were actual physical eight core processors 16 all of them like having sorry from the five up having the the smt or hyper threading on there meaning it doubled the amount of logical processes that you got in what intel had to bring to that was absolutely fuck all and that's when it was like oh shit panic stations get out whatever we can get the higher horizons uh, i7s down to i5s and so on and so forth that's basically what they had to do so so i've, I've got a 10 core processor now what are um amd's premium processors is it the, 24 the ryzen 9 yes the ryzen 9 is 24. so there are 24 physical cores i don't know if it's physical or not is it 12 core I, like hyper threaded i'll carry on using I, that even intel so. i mean mine isn't the highest cores you can get for an intel so that i think they're probably equal then yeah I mean, they, they, but intel would like the... it behind for a while they, they did they have were... the 32 core processors though they've got the thread rippers and they're they're just dumb yeah. But yeah, it was it was AMD who booked that trend and right. Intel had to follow. So you will see that now from Intel to compete, but yeah, that was it. Um yeah, Fair and that's enough. my side. And then so I think Matt's got um yeah, this uh, little good gem to talk about. Yeah. Uh do you remember that that time where um <laughs> our mates EA they were like, Why why do we need Steam? Because we can just make our own, you know, content delivery system. Well, they've kind of changed their mind and now they're bringing it back to Steam because Steam has a big user base, base and doesn't hate Origin. Well, no, sorry, Steam <laughs> does hate Origin, but uh, it's got better sentiment than Origin. So, yeah. I, think, I don't think Steam hates or Valve hate Origin or EA. I think they just they just kind of empathize, not empathize. I, the... I, I think it's more the user base dislikes it because having every, even though people complain about 
having monopolies, everybody's okay for Steam to have a monopoly. So. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And we're all yeah. okay with it as well, uh, to an it extent. Is, I, I, I have no problem buying from wherever's the cheapest. I'll buy from GOG, I'll buy on Origin, I'll buy where, wherever. I don't have any brand loyalty because when you do, you end up exactly like we were just talking about with Intel. Mm. You get one company that can do what they want. So, yeah, they're bringing um, the back catalogue to Steam again. And they're also bringing um, EA Access, I think it's called, the subscription service where you have yeah. access to all the latest games as they come out and everything, which I believe will be the first time that you've, you've been able to buy a subscription-based service through Steam. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. I imagine that everybody will be very positive about it because it's now on Steam. But we'll see. Uh, it's probably the death of Origin then, isn't it? I would imagine so. I mean, I mean <laughs> even Microsoft's bringing a lot of the top tier games that have only been available at Microsoft Store to Steam just because that's where the market is and that's where everybody doesn't complain about things for some reason. I think it's an integrated experience, Steam, isn't it? And we it was- all use it. It's it I can't I can't complain about Steam other than I'd really like the store to have better filtering options. Yeah, it was more- so far ahead of its time. Steam was like, and because it's been there for so long, it literally sticks in the hearts of every PC gamer pretty much as the one system. And it is a monopoly, but it's people don't care because it brings so much convenience. Do you not remember the time? And and we still have the control as well, though. Yeah. Whereas in the Microsoft Store, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to find just find an executable um let alone try to modify a microsoft store game you know add a mod to it or anything the the executables they just don't exist they don't even have executables for the games they're inside uh, proprietary zip files that are somehow encrypted or or hidden or something i've still i'm still i mean i haven't dug really deep but they're somewhere in a hidden file that's inaccessible to standard, even system administrator users within a, a, you can choose which drive to install them on, but that's it. Yeah. And I hate that. I absolutely hate that lack of control as a PC user, especially a PC gamer, you know, who've, who've always had access to the raw files. You know, when we were talking about the other day, that apocalypse mod for, um, uh, Dawn of War, Dawn, Dawn of War, Dawn of War. Yeah. One, um, one. If you had Dawn of War on the Microsoft Store, there's no way you could do that. There's absolutely yeah. no way. And it's it's sad because games are going to fall out of band, aren't they? That where they're just they're just so old that no one really cares if you pay for it or not anymore. And like oh. when people want to mod them, it's like yeah, it's still on our store. You can't mod it. It's like what, why? It's like got all this interest to do that. Like, yeah, if Dawn of War was purely available on the Microsoft Store, I wouldn't play it. Just wouldn't, because I can't mod it. So mm. there'd be no point. It'd just be boring, because I've played the original to death. So And also, it also kind of hides the um, the amount of drive space it uses as well. It tells you in the Microsoft Store, this game uses 138 gigabytes. And you can't find out where that, you can't You can't physically find out where that is without doing some real dig, deep digging, you know? Um, what is in, like, within it, with, contained within itself, what it's allocated to? I've installed it on my F drive. Yeah. If I open up my F drive now, I mean, I'm a fairly advanced PC user. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not fairly advanced. I'm very advanced PC user. Yep. Right. I have my Epic Games store install. I've got my GOG Galaxy install. This is my, my, I've got my Quake 2 folder, which is the only root game that I've got in this, <laughs> in this whole thing. <laughs> I've got some some ROMs. Um, I've got some, you know, uh, got Steam, Steam Command for running servers and things like that. Team Speak, blah de blah. Even Vortex Mod Manager for you know that kind of thing. And I've got Windows apps, WP System, yeah. W Download Cache, WU Download Cache, yeah. and then I've got MS Download TMP and System Volume Information. Right now, if I click on, I'm assuming this is where the wood. Will, uh, Windows apps. You currently don't have permission to access this folder. Click continue yep. to permanently get access to this folder. You click continue. I'm access not going to do it now. You have to undo that to actually get access to anything. Um, if I right click on it and go to properties, 
Zero bytes. Because you don't have permission. I, I, I get that. And it's also marked as read-only, but it's yep. not read-only. Um, it's... I dislike it as well. Right, you have been denied permission to access this folder. Please go yep. to the security tab and fuck around with your permissions and probably ruin the entire Microsoft store while you're doing it. Yeah, because you have no... Yeah. It's Why? Just, I don't know. It pisses, pisses me off as well. And my final point on it is that it makes a mess of a drive too. Yeah. Why can't I have a folder and then keep all your shit under that? Why do you have to just ruin a root drive with all this crap on there? And I have no idea what's like two years down the line if I've kept all your stuff installed, whether any of it's relevant anymore. And you won't let me delete it because of all your <clears> damn permissions. It really is just a mess. If I, if I want to uninstall an app, I have to go into the Microsoft Store, and click the uninstall button, yeah. and I have no confidence that it's deleted all of the files that are relevant for that as well. It's It's really... It pisses me off quite a lot, and that's the. I mean, the the only reason that I'm accepting this is that it's a pound, you know, and, <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah. quite Fair a enough. lot of value there for that pound. And even for the next, I'd say for the next year uh, of two ninety nine or three ninety nine a month, there's a lot of value in the games that I want to play um, for that yeah. for that money. But I still think there's some games I'm going to end up buying anyway. The less I can do in the Microsoft Store, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Worse than Epic? No. I, I don't I'd... think there's really... I, I don't think there's really a worse one. They've, they've all got the pros and cons. I mean, Epic... Say what you like about Epic. They're giving out free games. That's not that bad, really. People are on a touch of a high horse. Yeah. No, I meant, I meant user experience-wise. Um so Epic Store, the fact that the actual store itself, when I click on a, a game and try and buy a game, quite often it doesn't pop up. There's it's some kind of single page application, and then the the request that's gone to grab the information for the game has failed, and it doesn't retry. I've went downstairs and made my bloody lunch, and come back upstairs, and it's still fucking loading. And I try it again, and it doesn't work. And I just want to kill everything. I want to buy. Give me. I want to give you some of my money, but it won't let me. Well, in that case, you'll have to play Fortnite Season 2 and buy some V-Bucks. <laughs> I don't know wow. what any of that means. That's yeah. kid, kid speak to me. God, Chris, you're such a boomer. <clears throat> Again, don't know what that is. <laughs> is, that, is that like Left 4 Dead zombie thing? It's no. one of them boomers, isn't it? God, don't hit the <laughs> dab too don't, hard, don't. Granddad. <laughs> don't. The, look, the look of shame that Danny, Dan, Danny gave me then. <laughs> Just no, mate. Just, <laughs> just no. Just, just speaking of left, <laughs> speaking of left for dead, though, we did pick that up the other week. Actually, we played, picked up left for dead too, and we modded the shit out of it. And I'll just give you some highlights. So I made a what, and this is really fucking cool. This is another plus for Steam, right? The workshop and the games that work with the workshop, absolutely on point. Mm. What's even better is I didn't know I could do this. I can curate other people's mods and put them into a mod pack for other people to then subscribe to. Yep. That shit is amazing because I just made a mod pack and then told all the other guys who are playing Left 4 Dead with me, yeah, just download the LANOPS Left 4 Dead Autism pack and you'll be fine. And the reason why it's called that is because <laughs> we changed this. <laughs> we, this is the final thing. We changed the tank into Johnny Bravo, who would actually have all the voice lines. Um as he approached you. We had the um, defibrillator as basically whenever somebody gets killed, you can defib them. Obviously, you know that. But the sound it plays when they get back up is the Windows XP startup sound. <laughs> <laughs> and it does it really well. We've got the... Um, now, this one, I don't mean to say this, Chris, but you might not understand this one, but Matt might know who the pink guy is. Who pink guy is. So we had the hunter is pink guy who basically just says the, the vocal lines of pink guy. And... Um, <laughs> We also had when the tank throws the rocks, he goes yeet, which is obviously another millennial kind of thing. And we we replaced all of the weapons, including a bendy AK. And just because that game has that mod that mod ability and the Steam Workshop thing, it just brought an entire new life to it, including the campaigns. If you ever played any aftermarket campaigns for Left 4 Dead, yeah, some yeah, of them yeah. are absolutely brilliant. We played the Resident Evil one, which takes you through the hive. Holy shit, that was f brilliant. We played like a random Japanese one just because Japan. It was pretty cool. Um, and we played through a Silent Hill one where we have to find random keys to get 
through a level system and whatever else. But it's just like the amount of love that people put into it just astounds me. And it was just so good to pick it up again. And like, it's one of them games where it's like, oh, Left 4 Dead, I played the shit out of that. But then you put a mod on it. It's like, yes, this is great. My, Brilliant. My group of mates um, who used to play Quake with us, they got into Left 4 Dead quite a lot. And at the time, I was, uh, I'd moved away and I wasn't really playing games that much. It was the one period in my life where I, I kind of had a social life, let's say. Um, a, a very a very busy social life, rather, and I didn't play anything. And they nailed it, and I kind of regret that. I've played a lot of Left 4 Dead, but nowhere near as much as I probably could have, should have done. Uh, it's a good game. It's very good. Yeah. I went back to it the other week, actually, trying to play it on Steam Link. It doesn't right. work. The delay does not much. work. No, not the delay. No, no, the control system, mate. Nope. Hmm. Especially not with control pads as well. Interesting, because it came out on the Xbox and worked perfect. Well, the the, the the Steam release of Left 4 Dead 2... Right, doesn't have... Does not. Yeah. Try getting it working over Steam Link with a control... In fact, try getting it working on your PC with a control pad. It's not doesn't like it. It's not easy to, to work. And on a Steam Link, it just, it's, just, it's so sensitive. You can't turn the sensitivity down yeah. either. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, right. I thought I'd just mention that anyway. No, it's good. good. Right, so we have ran over. Well and truly ran over, but who cares? Um, so that is the end of, that, yeah, that, that's the we end of the show. Well. So thank you very much for listening. We shall see you next time on Resonance Arcade. And you can watch all of our shows on Resonance at uh, youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade. You can tell I've not done this in a while. And visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news and live footage of us showering with our dads. And finally, you should join <laughs> us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things dad shower related Related. gaming. <laughs> and all nice. I have to say is goodbye. See you next week. See you next Ta -ta. week.